Hey guys, Greg here, let's solve clone graph, lead code number 133. So we're given a reference of a node in a connected and undirected graph. And we need to return what's called a deep copy or a clone of the graph. So there's a lot of reading here. It's really not necessary, I'll explain it. So say we are given this graph here, one, two, three, four, we have some connections. And what we want to return is this copy here. So it looks like a clone, the nodes are new. So we actually literally used like the constructor of our class, over here to create new nodes. And the graph looks the same. So basically you would need to create, if there's four nodes in the original graph, you would need to create these four nodes and link them up to their partners. Now what they don't want you to do is just return the exact same graph. That's just doing nothing. Of course you wouldn't do that. And you also can't return like a different graph. So these two cases kind of common sense here. They would want you just to, given the original graph, or you're actually given just a node in that graph, say the one here, you would need to traverse and figure out what that graph looks like, and then return an entire copy of that where you have new nodes connected to their partners. Okay, so suppose we are given this graph here. And by given the graph, we're given a reference to one of the nodes. And say we're given the reference to this node here. It doesn't really matter which node reference you were given because you can kind of just traverse the graph to figure out what it looks like no matter what. Okay, but say we are given this node reference right here and we would need to create a copy. So, okay, I mean, obviously we would probably create a copy of the node we're looking at here. We could create one as three. And this three here, well, you could look at this thing's neighbors and realize is, hey, it's actually connected to two different nodes over here. But we can't just immediately say that this guy is neighbors with these other nodes because those nodes don't actually exist yet. So since it's kind of irritating to say, look, okay, this thing is connected to nodes that don't exist yet. Well, let's just go through and create all of the nodes, okay? So before we worry about connecting these neighbors up here, like it looks over here, let's not worry about that for now and just make all of the nodes. So what we could do is, you know, we're at this three here and then we could do say, a depth first search. So that three would then go over to here, look at this one, and we could be like, okay, well, we haven't created a one yet, so we'll create a one. And then we're at one, we'll do a DFS, so keep it going from here, and we'll say, okay, well, we haven't made a two yet, let's make a two. And same thing, DFS is gonna go over here, we'd see a four, and so we could create a four. Now we'd have to keep track of the things we visited already, because if you go over here, you don't kind of want to infinitely loop here, you'd want to know that we we've already visited three. So we'd want our DFS to be concluded right there. And we've created all of the nodes. Now we still have one more problem here. At this three here, we are going to see that it's actually friends with a one and a four. But we can't immediately say from this three, we can't just say link it up with this one and four because we don't have references to this one. I mean, we created it, but we don't actually have it saved anywhere. Specifically, how do we know given this node, we're talking about this one or given this old node, how do we know we're talking about this new node? We want a mapping or a hash map that says, hey, given one of the old nodes, we can actually immediately in O of one time, we can access the reference to the new node, which we now know exists because we're creating those. So what we're actually gonna do here is before we even create these nodes here, we are going to do a DFS through this graph and be like, okay, well, we have a node three. So I'm gonna reference this as basically a three in a circle here. Of course, a hash map can't actually take a three in a circle, but if you give it the node reference, that's basically the memory address address of that reference. And so you can actually hash on that. So we can put these as keys in a dictionary. And so we'd say, okay, we're at this old node here. Let's actually map that to, well, we haven't created this yet. Let's actually create this node and be like, okay, well, we have a node with the same value. Let's create that and also put it in the hash map. That way we know we can link our old node to a reference to our new node. So we DFS through this graph here, we'd see it's connected to this one. So we actually want a reference of the old one over to, we'll create a new node that has a one. By the way, I should be drawing them over here. It kind of creates these nodes just floating around, but we have references to them in the hash map now. So the one is friends with our two. So we'd say, okay, we have a two. We are going to map that old reference over to the new node, which is going to be a blue two. This four, so this old four over to the new node, which is going to be a blue four. Okay, so in one loop here, we would do a DFS through the original graph, we would create all of these nodes, and we would also map the old reference over to the new reference. That's going to be really helpful. 
Now we actually could either do two things. We could do another DFS through this graph and then use that to link this up, or we can actually just loop through the hash map. And it's way easier just to loop through the hash map. So when you loop through a hash map, we could take each key and value, say, okay, we got this node reference of three and it maps to a new node reference of three as well, this new three. And we could say, okay, well, we're at this three here. I need to link this three, which is just kind of, you can access that via the hash map very easily. So we need to link this this three up to its neighbors. Well, this old three, it's linked to this one and this four. Okay, well, if you have a reference to this one and you have a reference to this one, well, you can actually use the hash map. So then it's very, very easy to say, okay, well, three is friends with one. Okay, three is friends with this one. However, I'm gonna make a big deal about the fact that really we're only establishing this side of the connection right now. We're saying the three is pointing to the one so that when we go to the one, we can do the other side, which is the one points to the three, and then it would kind of look as you'd expect to. It would just be like a line. But for now, we're establishing this direction here. So then the three points to the four. Okay, the new three points to the new four. Now let's look at the next key value pair. So we look at the one. So we're looking at the one here. Okay, that's friends with a three. And so we're establishing this path now. So we can kind of replace that with the fact that this is just a line at this point. It's bi-directional, it's both ways. And the one is now friends with a two. So we're really establishing that direction of it. We look at the next key value pair here, two maps to two. Okay, so this two, it's friends with a one. We would then map this direction, basically making this a proper line now, bi-directional. And it's friends with the four mapping this direction right here. Everything's gonna get cleaned up here after the last piece. So four maps to four. We're looking at this four here that maps to the two. So we're going to get that piece, making this a proper line like that. And it also maps to the three. So that's going to fix that up here. So that after we've looped through this key value pairs, then we are going to have our new graph. And the thing that you want to return is the reference to the new graph. So you want to return this node. Well, that's really easy because if you are given the starting point point of this one. Well, again, you just use the hash map for the millionth time. This hash map is super, super useful for a bunch of things. It even gets you your thing you want to return in the end, which is just the reference there. Okay, so let's code this up. It's really cool. Okay, so we're given just the reference to one of the nodes in the original graph here. And what's really silly is you can actually see it in the typing here. It's optionally a node, which means it's either a node reference or it's none, basically null. And if it's null, then you just want to return null. So if not node, aka if it's null, you can just return basically Python's version of null there. Okay, otherwise we'll say that basically we're given the starting reference node is just node. That's going to make it easy to work with. And I'm going to call this O2N. This is our hash map here or in Python a dictionary. It's mapping old to new. So old node references over to new node references. Now we're going to use a iterative stack to do this DFS. It's just a fun way to do it. You could absolutely do this with recursion, but we're going to purposely use a stack for practice. And and for that, you'd put on the starting point of the graph, which is just our node or equivalently our start variable right there. Okay, for this, we are going to need a set of nodes that we visited before because we don't want to visit nodes multiple times. So we'd have visited is equal to an empty set. And we'll say that we've kind of already visited the starting point here, at least we're about to visit it. So to do an iterative DFS here, the key is that you do while stack. So basically while the stack is not empty, we have some nodes to take off of it. So we'll get the node, which is node is equal to stack dot pop. So we'll get the node of interest that we're currently looking at. And basically we want to create into the hash map that new node reference, okay? It doesn't exist yet. We don't have a match for this old node here. So we can do O to N, so that's our hash map here, at the node, because that's our original node in the graph. The old to new at the original node is going to map over to a new node that has the same value value, okay? So the key there is that it's a new node and it's going to have the same value as the original node's value. All right, now we just basically need to do this in a DFS manner. And to do that, in this way of representing the graph, nodes have values and they also have an attribute of neighbors, which is going to be a list of all of the node references that it has. So we can loop through its neighbors with for NEI, that's just sort for neighbor. So for ne in the node.neighbors, make sure you type that right. I'm Canadian. Canadian, so no you there. If the neighbor is not in visited, so if we haven't seen it before, well then mark that we have seen it because we're going to visit it shortly. And let's also put it on the stack so we can actually visit it at some point. Stack.append nay 
And since this is a stack and not a queue, this is going to do it in a DFS manner. So this is our first loop here. This will eventually expire once we visit all of the nodes. That is going to be an empty stack at some point, evaluating to false. And at that point, we will have fully built up the hash map, and that's going to map the old node references over to the new node references. So we'll loop through the key value pairs. So for old node and new node, that's a key value pair in the O to N dot items. So that's how you get key value pairs in the dictionary. Now at this point here, we know that old node kind of has its neighbors as a list of stuff. That's correct. But new node, it doesn't really have a list of neighbors. Uh, it actually is just an empty list right now because we haven't set it at all. So what we're trying to do here is to say that if old node is connected to its certain node references, well, the new node should be connected to its version of or its copy of those node references. So for each neighbor in the old node dot neighbors, so for each of those old neighbor references, well, we need to say that new node is also connected to its version of those, which is we'll call it new neighbor. So the new neighbor or the copy of the neighbor is going to be use the hash map. So O to N at the neighbor. So we're using the neighbor in the hash map, which is going to get the copy of that reference. And so new node is going to have a new neighbor here, new node dot neighbors dot append the new neighbor. So this is a new neighbor that it must have. We are appending to its list of neighbors saying that we now have another neighbor. This is going to loop through all the key value pairs in the dictionary, aka for each old node and new node reference. For each of the neighbors in that old nodes neighbors, well, we need to get its corresponding new neighbor via the hash map, and then we'll say that that new node has that neighbor. That's going to do it for all of them, and we need to return the copy of the original node that we were given, which is return O to N at the start. Two typos here, kind of funny. This one I just spelt wrong, and this one I you probably laughed earlier. I said that I'm Canadian, you need a U there. No, you do not want a U there in American English. Let's run that. Now the time complexity of this is as typical as it can be for one of these types of graphs here. We have vertices and edges, and basically we do a DFS to visit every node, and for each of those nodes that we visit, uh, we also loop through all of its neighbors, okay? We're visiting all of the nodes once, and we're visiting all of the edges once. So if you call this, people would call this big O of V plus E, where V is the number of vertices in the graph, in this example four, E is the number of total edges, so one, two, three, four here. Okay, now the space complexity of this, well, this is going to use an iterative DFS, which is going to put nodes on the stack. That's going to take up space. That could be as much as big O of V, so that many vertices on the stack. And that's not the only space that we're using. We're also actually using a hash map, which takes up space. And we're, again, basically saying that for each node in the original graph, we're actually making a new copy of that and putting that in the hash map. And we're not really putting edges in the hash map. We're just putting vertices to vertices. So that's also going to kind of be the number of vertices we have. So the space complexity would just be big O of V, where again, that's the number of vertices or nodes in the graph. And we're also storing a visited set, which is again going to store vertices. You don't really need this extra visited thing. You could actually just use O to N for that. I think just for clarity, it's kind of useful to have it in a separate set. So no matter what here, we're storing kind of many copies of the vertices here. The overall time complexity, O of V plus E, and space is big O of V. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.